Good evening, everybody. We are back to continue our series on proofs in Young's geometry. Uh, we're going to continue on the line of of the previous two proofs, uh, but first let's quickly review what the axioms were for this geometry. Axiom 1 says that there is a line in the geometry. Axiom 2 says that each... Wait... Each line in the geometry contains exactly three points, I think. Or is that axiom three? Nope, that's axiom two. Each line in the geometry contains exactly three points. Uh, axiom three says that not all points in the geometry are on a single line. So given a line, there must be some point off of it. Uh, axiom four says that given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line through it. And axiom 5 says, given any point that's not on a given line, then there exists exactly one line through that point that does not intersect the given line. In proposition 1, we proved that given any point in the geometry, there exists a line that does not contain the point. And in proposition 2, we showed that each point has at least four lines on that point. Now for, act, for Proposition 3, we're going to prove that there are in fact exactly four lines on that point. Okay, so this is one of those cases where uh, our previous proof really could have just been extended by a couple of lines and uh, for whatever reason, in this case, I ran out of room. Um, we're just going to say, we're just going to pretend that everything we had in place uh, in the previous proof is in place now. So we're going to say we have some point P, some arbitrary point P, and we have uh, by proposition 1 some line that doesn't contain that point, and by axiom 2, of course, that line contained three points, P1, P2, and P3, and of course there was a line between P1 and P, and a line between P2 and P, and a line between P3 and P, and uh, Axiom 5 guaranteed that there was also some line that went through P that did not contain, that did not intersect uh, this first, this, this uh, line that we got from Proposition 1. Okay, so just to uh, to clarify, this was line L. Uh, this this parallel line through P is line L prime, and uh, right. So here we go. Here's our setup. We showed that there were at least four lines that went through this point P, and what we're going to show now is that. Uh, these are the only ones. There are exactly four lines on this point. And the idea is that if we suppose that there's this line 5, or, sorry, line double prime, um, then we want to arrive at some sort of contradiction. We're assuming that there's a fifth line, and we're going to show that this contradicts everything we know and love about Young's geometry. So, um, what about this line L, prime, L double prime? Well, it can't contain P1, P2, or P3 because there's already a line uh, that goes through L, uh, that goes through P1 and P. That's called L1. There's already a line that goes through P2 and P. That's L2. And there's already a line that goes through P3 and P, and that's line L3. Okay, so L double prime can't intersect with L because it would have to go through P1, P2, or P3. But it can't not intersect with L because L prime is the unique line through P that does not intersect with L. Okay, so it can't intersect with L, and it cannot not intersect with L, so L prime sort of has this identity crisis. L double prime 
cannot exist. And that's our contradiction. Okay, so the fun part here is going to be uh, writing up a proof for this that doesn't simply involve uh, copying down all of the bits of the proof from Proposition 2, um, but does so in a way that is uh, that that recalls all that information in a way that's comprehensible. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to say let P be any point and then we're going to uh, use a kind of a dirty trick. We're going to let um, L L prime L1 L2, L3, P1, P2, and P3 be as in the proof of Proposition 2. Okay? So we're basically saying take that diagram from Proposition 2 and start looking at it again. Okay, now we suppose our L double prime is a fifth line through the point P. Suppose L double prime is a fifth distinct line that contains P. Okay? By axiom 4, L double prime cannot contain P1 because L1 already well, is the unique line that contains P1 and P. Okay? So L1 here already contains P1 and P. So L double prime can't also contain those two points. Uh, and we are assuming L1 contains P, so it cannot contain P1. Okay? The same argument shows that L double prime does not contain P2 or P3. Okay. So, L double prime does not intersect L. However, <clears throat> L prime, not L double prime, L prime is the unique line through P that does not intersect L. So L double prime cannot okay this is kind of bad cannot not intersect L. Okay, so L cannot intersect, or L double prime cannot intersect L because there are already lines through P that contain P1, P2, and P3, and it cannot not intersect L um, because L prime is the unique line guaranteed by axiom 5 that contains P and does not intersect.